No, an experimentalist dream is not really to prove a theory, but to disprove a famous theory. That's what you want to do. Science isn't about why, it's about why not. Why are the portals from Portal not wormholes? Everyone is wrong about the science of Portal, and I'm going to prove it in this video. I can't stress enough how frustrating it is to see people blatantly disregard how portals work and just pretend they know what they're talking about. The idea that portals are created via wormholes has been around since 2006, and plenty of people have taken it as an assumption that that's just how portals work. But specifically this video, warning, Portals kill. The science of portal. Peddles so much illiteracy and disregard for the real science that I, as an actual scientist, need to debunk it and set the record straight. And by doing so, we inadvertently come up with a solution to the portal paradox while explaining that portals are definitively not created by wormholes, but are, in fact, quantum tunneling events. If by some chance YouTube pushes this video into the algorithm and you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm the Shuckmeister. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. I received my undergraduate degree from one of the top engineering schools in the United States in engineering physics with a focus on nuclear physics. By the time this video comes out, I'll be entering my final semester of my master's degree in nuclear engineering, meaning I've spent the past five years studying topics related to the subject of this video. I've also had internship opportunities at a national lab and NASA. I don't say this stuff to brag, I just want to show you my credentials so hopefully you can understand I'm coming from the perspective of someone who has worked my butt off solving problems like this, and you can think of this video as my combustible lemon that will burn game theory's misinformation down. I'm gonna get my engineers to invent a combustible lemon that burns your house down! In the blue corner is a nuclear physicist, and in the red corner, a theater major. No joke, you can find this on his LinkedIn, and this explains a lot. Like why he feels the need to scream instead of formulating scientifically sound arguments. I'm not saying that people outside of the field can't talk about science. Hell, I'm no expert. Science is not a consensus. It comes from creating hypotheses and then supporting them through experimentation. But at the very least, I can rebuff fake scientists like Austin, people who are actively lying to you by claiming they know what they're talking about? People who have the audacity to deride people like myself for disagreeing with them. And is bound to bring armchair scientists out of the woodwork to hurl their aggressive um actuallys at me with reckless abandon. Allow me to cut through those words! And I want to get more people interested in science, but the way he does it just isn't right. Well, it's right for the YouTube algorithm, at least 5.7 million views later. Just keep that in mind throughout this video. Okay, so now that we're done talking about why I want to make this video in the first place, let's actually dive into the meat and potatoes of this thing. I love Portal. Am I thick? See. This series of games truly makes you think outside of the box, and it's surprising how much actual science they got right. As a roadmap for this video, I'm going to show you that Valve explicitly states how portals are created, then talk about some of the real-world experiments I've run personally in lab on this topic, and finally round it off with a solution to the portal paradox. Let's start with what Valve has shown us themselves. In Aperture Investment Opportunity number 4, Boots, from the Valve YouTube channel, they show us the blueprints for the portal gun. And you wanna know what it's called? The Quantum Tunneling Device. This destroys the notion that portals are created from wormholes with facts and logic. Quantum tunneling is not, I repeat, is not the same thing as a wormhole. Wormholes come from general relativity, something I've covered in a previous video that you should totally check out after this one, while quantum tunneling comes from quantum mechanics. To mix quantum mechanics and general relativity without substantial evidence shows you do not actually care about the laws of physics. In many previous videos, I've talked about the four fundamental forces that govern our universe. Gravity, electromagnetic, strong nuclear, and weak nuclear. The only solid connection between any of these forces is the link between the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force, discovered by Richard Feynman, which is known as quantum electrodynamics. So why is Valve specifying that quantum tunneling is used instead of wormholes? Because tunneling is a real effect that can be measured and monitored, while wormholes are still stuck in the realm of theoretical physics. Theoretical physics that, to me, seems much more like science 
science fiction rather than science fact. Do not listen to people who claim that negative mass is a solution to everything. It's not. In order to keep this from happening, you need negative mass to balance out the implosive pressure. That's right. You heard me. Negative mass. That's bullshit, and I don't believe it. <gasps> I'd just like to point out that if Austin actually edited his own videos, he would have had to watch Valve's video because clips from it show up not only in his wormhole video, but also his portal boots video, so... Yeah, omitting the actual schematics for the portal gun doesn't bode well for his theory. But Cuckmeister, I hear you screaming in the back. The same video shows that a component of the dual portal device is a miniaturized black hole. And we know that black holes are tied to wormholes. The gun shoots it out, so it's a done deal, right? Not necessarily. There's a component called a miniature black hole cooling fan. Interesting. This would suggest that the black hole is actually a power source rather than a projectile coming out of the portal device. This was my 4 a.m. eureka moment in validating the quantum tunneling effect, which I had to share with one of my fellow engineering students. Rotational kinetic energy caused by the gravity of a black hole is about 40% efficient when converting mass into energy via E equals mc squared. Nuclear reactions are less than 1% efficient and chemical reactions are about 10 to the minus 9% efficient. Minifysics has a video on this, but they also have a video that describes portals as wormholes too. So when I say everyone is wrong about portal science, I literally mean everyone, not just the game theorist. This maximized increase of power from the black hole is how the tunneling events could be extrapolated from the quantum level to be perceived on the macro scale. Now I've been talking a lot about tunneling without explaining exactly what it is, so allow me to do so now. Imagine you throw a tennis ball at a wall. The tennis ball will follow Newton's laws of physics and bounce back to you. But the laws of quantum mechanics say that there is a minuscule probability that that tennis ball will not bounce back to you. Instead, it will go straight through the wall and will actually lose energy while doing so. Now that's never gonna happen with a tennis ball, but it will happen with the smallest balls that we throw in the subatomic universe, electrons. Now you can actually see tunneling happen by replicating an experiment created by 1973 Nobel Prize winner and personal inspiration of mine, Ivor Yever. In Norway, one zero is the best grade you can get. Four zero is barely passing and six zero is failing. In the United States, four zero is the best grade you can get. I was not a good student and I got four zero in both mathematics and physics. Now, I got a job at General Electric Research Laboratory in Iskayuna, New York. And I got interviewed by the GE recruiter, and he looked at my diploma and he said, That's exactly what he said. I must be very good in physics and mathematics. I am normally a very honest person, I think. This Norwegian-American physicist monitored the tunneling phenomenon in semiconductors and superconductors, and I had to reproduce the same results as part of my modern experimental physics course, which was fitting at the time because I was working in a cryogenics research lab. I'm going to go through a synopsis of my research report on the findings and show you why tunneling expertly explains what's happening in Portal and how all the companion cubes fall into place. Quantum tunneling happens when a particle, like an electron or photon, propagates like a wave until it hits a potential barrier with higher energy. If the particle is dead set on continuing to keep going, it will exponentially decay in energy while passing through a barrier until it hits the other side and begins to propagate normally with reduced energy. If you put two conducting metals next to each other and apply an electrical current, the electrons will flow from one metal to another. But if you put a small barrier between them, like air, then electrons can't reach the other side. Stop right there, criminal scum! Now, any discussion of quantum tunneling in this context is not complete without some background on superconductivity. Superconductors are metals with two primary features, zero resistivity and perfect diamagnetism. Zero resistivity allows an electrical current to flow through a metal without anything impeding it. And perfect diamagnetism means that all magnetic fields have been expelled from the conductor. 
Schaefer. This phenomenon was described using bardeen cooper schaefer theory. To oversimplify what that means, when a metal enters a superconducting state, lightly bound fermions called Cooper pairs open up energy levels called Fermi energy gaps in the metal and greatly increase the probability that electrons will flow from one metal to the other via tunneling. There is a stipulation I have yet to mention. This only happens when things are really, really cold. The freezing point of water is 32 Fahrenheit, 0 Celsius, or 273 Kelvin. Air becomes liquid nitrogen at 77 Kelvin, or negative 196 Celsius, or negative 320 Fahrenheit. We need to get even colder than that. Sheer cold, like liquid helium levels of cold, which is only 4 Kelvin, or negative 269 Celsius, or negative 452 Fahrenheit. By stuffing our metals into a cryostat with liquid helium in it, we can get them cold enough to enter a superconducting state. But first, we're going to need the metals that we'll be working with. I choose AL and PB. A vacuum dome apparatus is used to bake a thin film deposition of aluminum that's only 2,500 angstroms thick. An angstrom is a unit of measurement that means 10 to the minus 10 meters, so really, really tiny. Well, they apparently can't spell thick either. Two Cs. Can you believe that? That's a counterintuitive way to compliment someone. That sample is then left out in the air for about 15 minutes, allowing the aluminum to oxidize, giving us aluminum oxide. This layer of oxygen becomes our potential potential barrier. Then a thin film deposition of lead that's only 1800 angstroms thick is applied, basically giving us a metal air metal sandwich. That sample is then wired to a probe, and the leads are connected to each side with silver conducting paint. Throw that staff into a cryostat, lower the temperature ever so steadily to about 4 Kelvin, and then you're ready to tunnel. But how do we know we're actually tunneling electrons? Well, the ability for tunneling to happen in a superconductor is proportional to the derivative of the current with respect to voltage. This is known as conductance, or the ability an object has to conduct electricity. Tunneling happens when a constant current is applied to the sample, and the temperature is lowered very carefully to around 2 Kelvin and the conductance will reach zero for a brief moment in time, meaning that those Fermi energy gaps that opened up as the sample got colder are now filled with electrons that have crossed the oxygen barrier from the aluminum to the lead. If you know your conductance, you can determine how big that energy gap is. This was a video that I recorded when it actually worked and I was bugging out so much. Oh my God, you guys don't understand how cool this actually is. I, I, I know, I know it's too Kelvin cool, but like actually like this is ridiculously awesome. This has major applications for Portal. First, let's start with the types of materials used. Ground up moon dust is the material used to create the Portal walls in Aperture Labs and the Gamma Repulsion Gel. And what does the moon happen to be made of? Why, quite a fair bit of aluminum and lead. That's good, and that makes sense too because it was poisonous to Cave Johnson. And speaking of Cave Johnson, one of the best characters in all of fiction ever, in his list of different scientific fields that Aperture is contributing to, superconducting experiments aren't only mentioned, but they're elaborated on in great detail. Just a heads up, we're going to have a superconductor turned up full blast and pointed at you for the duration of this next test. I'll be honest, we're throwing science at the wall here to see what sticks. No idea what it'll do. Probably nothing. Best case scenario, you might get some superpowers. Worst case, some tumors, which we'll cut out. So now you see things are starting to fall a little bit into place. Electrons have mass, and that mass is tunneled through a barrier. But photons, the particles that make up light, are also able to tunnel through potential barriers too, meaning that you could potentially see an object on the other side of a portal if it was upscaled using the black hole power source that I mentioned before. The only somewhat issue I see with this explanation makes aperture test facilities incredibly cold. But the disadvantage, of course, is that he has to do it at low temperature. Not a problem for the surface of the moon since the moon is already really frozen, but the way Chell is dressed, she might be feeling slight discomfort. 
Still more comfortable than deadly neurotoxin, though. So the way I see it, the blue portal is used to initiate a connection between the material and the tunneling effect, and then the orange portal would be used to link it by increasing the energy gaps of that surface, allowing particles to flow from one side to the other. Now, tunneling isn't limited in one direction, like passing through a wall, but it certainly is easiest. Electrons in the electron cloud of an atom sometimes tunnel to opposite sides of their respective orbitals in an asymmetrical fashion. The experiment I outlined is more of a proof of concept rather than a hard and fast rule, which allows Aperture Labs to probably not be a frozen wasteland all the time. But all of this leads to the portal paradox. If a portal itself is moving, what happens to the object going through it? Does it stay stationary or shoot out the other side? Well, it's neither, because the science shows us that portals do not move. They can't. Now, I'm not only talking from a gameplay perspective, but from the way Portal 2 explains how portals work, everything I brought up in this video, a portal would cease to exist if it started moving. Superconductivity and quantum tunneling occur at low temperatures, very close to absolute zero. Temperature, in essence, is a measurement of the movement of particles in an object. So the colder something is, the less the internal particles move. With fewer particles moving around, you're increasing the probability that something will tunnel from one side to the other because those energy gaps in the material are left open. So what we need to do to solve this paradox is introduce a new framing based on what the portals from portal are actually made of. Let's say you have a superconducting metal approaching an observed stationary electron. Would it pass through normally or shoot out the other side? Well, the concept of a quote-unquote stationary electron seems to break Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which states that you cannot know the momentum of an electron if you measure its position and vice versa. But in the context of relative motion, let's say you have an electron from a superconducting metal pass through a potential barrier into another superconducting metal. Does it shoot out the other side? Well, no, it does not it passes through normally just by the definition of tunneling. As I've mentioned before, when tunneling occurs, some energy is lost in the process to the potential barrier. While you can't know the momentum specifically, it is certain that the tunneled object will not increase in momentum once exiting the portal. Again, treating these tunneled objects as electrons, you could never shoot another electron out the opposite side. Thus, it implies it just plops out the other side. And it was really intelligent of the developers at Valve to have a real-world solution based on quantum mechanics for why their portals couldn't move. Or it was just way too complicated for the physics engine at the time, and they are the luckiest developers on Earth. Regardless, Portal is still an amazing series of games. This explanation is also sound with conservation of mass. Remember, if you ever hear someone use a hand-wavy excuse of negative mass to justify their portal theory, slowly back out of the room and continue on with your day. This is not science, really. But I see this assumption detract from otherwise solid discussions on Portal, like this one from Game Theory. Up until the point where wormholes are mentioned, I would say it's a pretty good video, showing that you don't have to fully discredit someone for making an honest mistake. So MatPat, I know we've had our differences before, but I'll cut you some slack. Austin, meanwhile, I'm sorry, mate, but this one was really bad. Please get a hold of whoever does your science videos for you and tell them they did not do enough research. Me, on the other hand, I'm gonna go back to doing my research. Congratulations! The simple fact that you're standing here listening to me means that you've made a glorious contribution to science. You've made it through this video and you're now smarter than all the fake YouTube scientists. You now know the way that the portals actually work, and discrediting the amount of detail and effort the developers put into this series with drunk screaming and botchery of general relativity was reason enough for me to make this video. I sincerely hope you all enjoyed it. I know my typical audience is really chill, but for anyone new who stumbles across this video, please don't harass anyone I disagreed with in this video. At the end of the day, we're talking about science from a series of games that's over a decade old but still somehow has relevance in pop culture. Instead of touching some grass, I might take a trip back out to my old cryogenics lab before I graduate. In the meantime, do all the typical YouTube stuff by subscribing, liking the video, commenting so this video gets out in the algorithm. Have a beautiful duang, and I'll see you all next time.